Hey, this is Ryan from Dakota Angler and Outfitter, and today we're going to be tying a reverse marabou tube fly. This is a, a Tom Larimer kind of style of fly. We uh, fished a lot of these this year when we went winter steelheading in Oregon. It's a pretty simple fly, and it uses a couple cool techniques to make it uh, make it big in the water without having a bunch of bulk that's hard to cast. We're using a large, rigid HMH tube and 210 denier pink ultra thread. So start your thread a ways back from the left side of your tube because this is actually going to be the left side of this will be the front of the fly when we're done so leave yourself plenty of room alright, give yourself a couple of wraps and keep in mind you're tying this fly backwards so the, the furthest back piece now, the furthest left side, is going to be the head of the fly so we're going to do an orange and pink color scheme on this one I actually caught a I caught a steelhead this winter on the same exact fly, so I have a lot of confidence in this. But you'll take a an orange uh, blood quill marabou. I'm using Nature Spirit here. Tie it in by the tip. And kind of fold everything back. Give yourself... Depends on the feather. Sometimes you need a few more wraps and sometimes you need a few less but I would say between three and four typically you don't want this fly to be really really bulky the idea is the reverse tying on this is going to make it kind of keep its shape in the water with uh, a lot less material than it would be if you tied it in a traditional style so we'll take this I got about three wraps on there I'll fold everything back tie that down Don't worry about trapping too much down. Marabou is a pretty forgiving feather to work with. So I'm kind of fold everything back. If you have any stray fibers, tie them back down. So now we'll take a pink marabou blood quill feather of the same style. We'll tie that in by the tip as well. And we're just going to do the same thing with this. So we'll do probably three, maybe four wraps, depending on the the feather. A lot of times I'll just peel the bottom of these off just because you're not going to use them anyways and they get get in your way sometimes. Kind of stroke everything back and then start wrapping and make sure you start your first wrap right next to where your your last your orange piece of marabou ended. Just make sure you kind of keep stroking everything back just so you don't get any trap down fibers this way. Alright, I'll do about half of, a, half of a turn more here. And tie that down also. Give it two or three good wraps just to make sure everything's cinched down. And trim off your rest of your feather. Let me adjust my camera a little bit here. All right, kind of clean that up. Now we're gonna take some pink, hot pink. They call this actually polar reflector flash. It's kind of the newest version of polar chenille from Hairline. Tie that in. Make sure that's tied in nice and good. And give yourself, oh, probably a quarter of an inch or so. You get four wraps maybe out of this. And then, same thing as you do with the marabou, kind of stroke it back as you you wrap it. This will kind of help prop the fly up when we get, <coughs> get it flipped around and get the front of the fly finished. And it gives it a nice underbody from the back that the fish can see when it's swinging across the current. Alright, one more. I'll tie that down. Alright, trim off your excess. If you have any stray fibers you can either trim them off or I usually just fold them back to the to the left. 
kind of build a little head here and then flip finish like that alright so now trim off your thread so we're actually going to take take this off now of the vise turn it around and put it back on this way. So then we'll kind of stroke everything back. What I like to do a lot of times is you can take these hair clips like they do in a lot of pike and musky fly tying and just kind of clip everything back and keep most of it out of your way. So then go ahead and start your thread pretty close to the marabou here. And then now we're going to put in a couple strands of flash. And once I get my thread started, I like taking that clip off. Fold everything back. And we'll take, you can use regular flashaboo or whatever kind of flash you like. But this uh, ripple ice fiber, which is another new material from Hairline, looks really nice. And it's kind of a, more of a subtle flash than a lot of traditional flashes are. So what I do... Just take and tie in. You want it to end up about the same length as the fly. Maybe hang just a little behind, I think, looks a little better. So tie in maybe five or six strands on each side. You can do a little more, a little less, depending on what your preferences are. So I got that side tied in. Oops. Alright, we'll spin it over. Do the same thing on this other side. Do about the same five or six strands. I don't really bother trimming the <clears throat> ends of them. I kind of like the uneven ends on these. Gives your fly a little more of a lifelike look in the water. So same thing. And just a few strands on this side. And you can use kind of a matching color like I'm doing here. You can use a contrast color. Looks good too. This is more of a, a template for a fly than anything else. You don't have to do exactly exactly a certain certain kind of flash or a certain kind of underbody all right so we've got that done now we'll take we got to clean up this little thread head we've got here so we'll take a little bit of a kind of a hot orange hackle feather here trim off a little spot to tie it in by the tip oops make sure everything's kind of folded out of the way when you're going to tie that in that one little stray fiber here take and kind of kind of prop all the hackles up and then fold them back we're gonna use a cone head to fold all this back when we're done anyway so it's not super super important but makes your fly look better if you kind of be cognizant of things like that all right so keep folding it back wrap a few that will be looking very good. We'll go a little further down on this towards some softer, a little softer feathers, softer fibers. All right. Like that. All right. So then fold everything up and back, and you only need. A couple wraps typically of this is more than enough. You're just kind of covering up that big thread head we've got here. Just make sure as you're wrapping it, nothing's getting trapped down. So we've got one. We'll do two. trap down fibers here. And once you kind of get a rough idea of how much you're going to do, I take and peel off all this extra just so it's easier to tie it down without trapping down a bunch of fibers. Like so. I'll tie that off. And then 
about three wraps on that. Trim off your excess. And trying not to make the head too big so our tube cone head can fit over it. that. Kind of make sure everything's sitting as you like it. And then we're going to take one of these an orange cone head. You could do a gold or a silver or whatever you like. But it'll fit right over that. So what we're going to do is we've got the cone head sitting on there and you've got all this extra space of the tube I'm gonna take it off the vise and I'm gonna cut it right here kinda right in the middle of that and I'm gonna take a lighter and I'm gonna burn the tube up to the cone head which will force everything to stay pushed back and it'll, it'll finish the fly without me having to put any thread in front of this so I'm gonna take it off the vise and do that quick These are nice simple flies that you can kind of fill a box with so you have a, a full range of colors and, and sizes without having to tie some really complicated intruder style flies. So with this I cut it off. Have that little bit hanging in front. A lot of times I put it back on the mandrel. and then take a lighter and this will just flare the end of that tube right up to the edge of the cone but you can let it cool off a little bit before you touch it with that will keep everything everything else on there and keep the kind of finish the fly so you can tie this fly in a lot of different I mean whatever color combination you want essentially it's a good uh, a good trout fly even if you tie it in more trouty colors, kind of olive and black and it's a good swing fly for like the North Platte and the Bighorn and the Missouri. So it's easy one to tie. If you're going winter steelhead fishing I'd definitely be sure to uh, just tie up a few of these in a few different colors. Thanks for watching.